Hello guys, it's Lauren here. I have a super special layout to share with you today. I'm using the beautiful newest collection by Coco Vanilla called Unforgettable and I am scrapbooking one of the newest members of my friendship circle and this is little Arwen and one of my dear friends Kristen who lives in beautiful Sydney has just had this most delightful precious little girl who I can't wait to meet and kiss all over. This little dolly has been loved from the moment she was conceived and we are so blessed to have her in our life and I thought when she was born and this photo was shared with us welcoming her into the world that I just had to scrapbook it and the collection I thought was this beautiful unforgettable collection. Now as you can see I have got lots and lots of bits and pieces there and that's because I have used this collection there's nothing left of it. I think I ended up getting a few papers, a 6x8 paper pad, um, some flares, the ephemera of course, some sticker sheets and I think that was all I got in the collection. Um, yeah, I think that was all I picked up but pretty much the entire collection and I have worked it to death. I have only got this last little bit here and I knew that when I saw the colours in this beautiful photo of this little dolly, I knew that this collection um, would match perfectly. So here I am, I have just gessoed a white page of the Basil Marshmallow because I want to add my mixed media background like like the Lauren, Lauren does and I'm using three uh, they're not shimmers they are the Lindy Stamp Gang Magicals little powders to create my background this my backgrounds take me a little bit of time because I well for a few reasons I really enjoy doing them I enjoy playing and it gives me the time to think about what um, I want to journal and how I want my layout to come together but also the effect that I like usually requires drying off between each layer. So as you'll see here, I'm just moving the beautiful watered down little magical powders um, just around the page and I'm just going to add some different colours. But what I'm going to do is dry off between each of my layers, which means that my next colour will sit on top. Um, they do reactivate, but you've got a little bit of a window where you can dry off in between and the colours will sit on top of each other. So these beautiful tones, um, I pick the, I, I get all my Lindy Stamp Gang Magicals from the colour kits from the Hip Kit Club. Um, if you haven't heard of the Hip Kit Club, you should go and check it out. They do amazing kits each month. They get delivered to your door and you think you've got a Christmas present every month. Um, and the colour kit usually in, at the moment is including the Lindy Stamp Gang Magicals and... Here you can see I'm drying off. As you can see, I'm drying off all that beautiful pigment starts to sort of spread to the edges and here I am, I can add more. If you add more of the powder to it, you get a richer colour. It's not... Um, it's not going to remain the same. The more you add, more pigment you add, the deeper the colour will get. And um, there you go. So I'm using these three colours. Um, I'll try and remember to put the three colours in the description below because I haven't got them here with me while I'm doing this voiceover. So if you're interested in getting these nice tones, then I'll I'll mention that in the description below. So you can um, you can do a little bit of shopping if you want. So here I am, I'm just drying off, once again thinking about how I'm going to put this layout together. The Unforgettable collection is full of florals and butterflies and I grabbed a few of the thickers that I have in my stash um, and I was thinking about what my title would be. This little dolly's name is Arwen and I end up falling back on the title Welcome Arwen um, because that's what we were, we were just... Um, we would, we're just so excited and feel so blessed that she's in our world and can't wait to watch her grow up and and to see her, you know, thrive and be loved and be part of our extended family, friend family network, I guess you can say. So he, here I am, I'm just finishing off with the drying. Um, if you've got any questions about my mixed media background, please just add it at 
quick, well, sorry, make a comment below and I'll get back to you. Um, I've been really busy lately at the moment, homes um, surrounded by bushfires and we're trying to sort of help people that have been, you know, really um, have been in the front line and have lost their homes and things like that. Um, and so I'm sitting here and I'm looking out my window as I'm doing this voiceover and it's just all smoky. I can't see the mountain range that I usually can see and I can't I can't even see some of the houses that I usually see. The smoke is so thick and dense and we are just praying for rain. So if you can send some prayers our way for rain and to ease these bushfires, that would be greatly appreciated. So here you can see I'm cleaning up because in all my haste, I have a bottle where I put my paintbrushes and it's got the water in there. And in my, you know, haste of doing layers and concentrating on other things, <laughs> I then put my heat gun into my water bottle with my paintbrush, <laughs> where my paintbrush was. And so I picked it up and there was water everywhere and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I am going to electrocute myself. Thankfully, a quick dry off and a, a blast of the heat gun and it's working and I'm still here to do this voiceover today. So I haven't been electrocuted and I'm not <laughs> lay, laying on my scrapbooking room floor zapped <laughs> but yeah I guess that that is a hazard that we probably should um, be mindful of when scrapbooking tip do not place your heat gun into your paint uh, water bottle <laughs> Anyway, so I'm finally, I'm, you're probably thinking, Lauren, this background's taking a long time, but I finally finished it. Now, here I am working out which photo. I had the, printed them off in a couple of different sizes. Which photo am I going to use? And based on the kind of looking at the ratio of my background versus my photo and the embellishments that I was thinking that I really wanted to use, I went with the smaller option there, which is just a three by four inch photo, which is half a normal size photo. So usually I print off two three by fours on a standard six by four inch photo and cut them in half. And that seems to be my favorite size. I tend to fall back on that one. So yeah, so here I am. I'm just going through all the scraps that I had in, from my 6x8 paper pad and um, just trying to use them up, adding, so, add, adding some layers so little R ones, little precious little face sort of jumps off the page and doesn't get blended into the background. And so that's just simple layering techniques. As you can see, the border I have put on is still very thin. It's not a big border, but what it does is just creates that level of uh, separation between my background and my photo. Here I am pulling through some leftover ephemera pieces, which was this gorgeous wood grain frame. And I knew that that would um, add that another layer and then finishing off with this beautiful piece which has a text on it which you don't end up seeing much of but once again it's just adding those layers I did manage to squeeze in there that little word phrase which was perfect spacing that was definitely not planned it just sort of happened when I was layering it up but yeah sometimes these little little magic moments pop up in your scrapbooking and you get a little gem like that so here I am now thinking about my embellishments, using up my scraps and what, I, what I'm going to do to try and turn this layout into a little bit of magic here. This little dolly, although they're not, you know, these colours are warm tones and it really could be for if um, this little one was a boy or a girl, these tones would work perfectly. So if you're um, wanting to scrapbook even pregnancy photos, you don't know what you're having, but you're wanting to do maybe some ultrasound photos or something like that, this colour palette here and this collection is has that balance of neutral. It's not all pinks and things like that. You've got these these tones that could be either boy or girl. So um, yeah, it was perfect. And it was perfect that little Arwen was wearing that lovely little suit that matched in 
just perfectly. <laughs> so here I am. Butterflies are always beautiful. It makes a layout come together, especially when you only apply adhesive to the center of the butterfly and then push up and fluff up the little wings a little bit, which makes the layout sort of come to come alive and add a bit of dimension. So consider that when you're placing your butterflies down. You don't have to adhere all the wings and everything and have everything sitting so flat. Let the little wings sit up a bit. These beautiful cardstock, especially the Cocoa Vanilla, is really thick cardstock. So you've got the luxury of sort of bending them up a little and even when they're in your albums um, with the pressure of other layouts sitting on top of them, the, the wings still create that little bit of dimension. If you're worried about that but still want some dimension, you can do what I'm doing here and just adding a little bit of foam. I'd run out of the foam tape, so bear with me while I do this. This was really painful for me. <laughs> Thankfully, I've got some more foam tape right now. Um, but yes, you can always add a little bit of foam tape to give that dimension as well if you don't want to bend up those little wings. A little bit of foam tape behind there will just give that little extra bit of height and make the layout feel like it's coming alive. Um, you know as well that's another that's another way so here I am painfully peeling off all those little squares and just adhering that main cluster down that little title there was not from the ephemera pack that was from a cut apart sheet that came in the in the set I love flare buttons but sometimes I just can't work out where to put them I want to put them on but sometimes I think I don't know whether it's that they're too bulky or Anyway, back on track. Sorry, that piece came from the cut apart sheet. So the cut apart sheets are always really great for things like that. They're also great for layering and you're only buying one piece of paper, but you're getting lots of different colors and tones and titles all in just one sheet of paper. So it's a really affordable way of creating ephemera pieces without actually having to buy an ephemera pack or if the you know the budget doesn't stretch that far look for a cut apart sheet and I'm sure that you're going to be able to get some things to fussy cut and be able to really create some beautiful um, embellishments just using that piece of paper. Coco Vanilla always knocks their cut apart sheet out of the park and you get butterflies and titles and frames and things like that so that's a perfect um Perfect company to have a look at when you're wanting a really uh, versatile cut apart sheet. So here I am, I'm now placing my title on. I've got a soft, really soft, delicate pink welcome there and that's just from one of the American Crafts thicker sets that I've had in my stash for a long time. And then I've got a um, an alpha set where I'll put her beautiful name and it is just a white one with a light pink line on top so all these sort of color tones sort of blend and match the pink is just a little bit like bright and it probably doesn't match too well but because um, we knew she was a little girl I thought it doesn't really matter there so here I am just placing out her name and that light little pink line in there is just really sweet and it was what I needed to bring that welcome pink in and uh, sort of tone down that welcome pink and sort of blend it into the color palette that I'd already been using um, with the background and the embellishments. I love gray. Gray tends to work with everything. If you've got gray, white and then add another color, I'm pretty sure it's going to work. It's my favorite color palette and I've always told my husband when we build my dream home, um, my walls are going to be grey and white and then I can just add a splash of colour whenever I want to change. So if I want to add a yellow, it would look good. If I want to add pink, it would look good. If I want to add navy, it would look good. So grey and white tends to be my sort of go-to um, and it, it's always an easy palette to use. So if you're ever struggling with a colour palette, I recommend grey and white and pick another colour and I promise you it'll all come together just like it has here. Yep. So here I am, I'm just finishing off. If you've got any questions about what I um what I've been doing here or if you're feeling I, I, how about I give you a bit of a challenge? Who who would like a bit of a challenge? I want you to have do a challenge, do a layout with me, tag me in it, send me a private message with a photo of it. I'd like to, for you to share a layout with me so I can go and get inspired by your beautiful work as well. Um, that has a butterfly on it and some use of mixed media. So if 
I want to challenge you to do that. I want to share it with, I want you to share it with me. Just tag me, send me a private message, um, tag me on Instagram, Pinterest, wherever you want. And I promise you I'll stop by and check it out and let's inspire each other just with our scrapbooking alone. You are my community and I feel so blessed. Even when I have a break, I get messages from people just touching base, checking everything's okay. And especially with these bushfires that are going on at the moment, I'm getting lots of messages from people who really care. So please let me be inspired by you and share with me what you create. I would love to see that. All right, there's beautiful Arwen and this lovely layout has, which has come together using cocoa vanilla. Um, any questions, leave them in the comments below, but please go and scrapbook and once most importantly, take care. Okay, bye. Music.